A Canadian is at the center of a remarkable medical story. He is in a vegetative state, but a team of doctors has discovered that he is more aware of his surroundings than they ever thought possible. In fact, he can even respond to questions. The doctors just have to learn how to read his mind. Kim Brunhuber has that story. You're not going to make a decision. Despite what they were told, Scott Routley's parents knew there was someone in there. They just had no proof until now. Twelve years ago, their son got into a bad car accident. When he came out of his coma, doctors thought he was in a vegetative state. His eyes were open, he could move, but not respond. Dr. Brian Young is Routley's neurologist. So you worked with Scott for a decade. A decade, Did he yes. show any signs of awareness? Any... Not, a, not at all, no. Turned out, doctors just didn't have the right tools Scott, to get the answers. Right. This is your big chance. We really want For years, neuroscientist Dr. Adrian Owen has been working with seemingly vegetative patients like Routley. He's been asking them questions and monitoring their brain patterns to see if the patients could understand and respond. This is where I want you to imagine that you're playing tennis. Dr. Owen found that one in five patients who were thought to be in a vegetative state could respond to basic yes or no questions. Now he's taking his research a step further by asking patients like Routley questions to which only they know the answer. I want you to tell us whether you are in any pain. The brain scan showed Routley had responded. That would suggest that he's not in pain, which is a big relief. Routley's neurologist says when he saw the evidence of his patient's response, he couldn't believe his eyes. Is it going to change the way you approach uh, seemingly vegetative patients? Yes, in some of the head injured patients, we really can't anatomically see the full extent of the injury. And in those patients, I think we have to be very careful about making the diagnosis of vegetative state. Now, family and doctors know that some patients will appreciate the music they play for them, absorb the books they read them. And these sort of simple nuances of everyday life that I can imagine might make a huge difference to somebody's quality of life. In the short term, some experts say medical textbooks will have to be rewritten to include this research. In the long term, they hope the technology will become cheap and portable enough to be used in hospital rooms, even at home to allow people who are trapped in their own bodies the freedom to finally make a few choices for themselves. Kim Brunhuber, CBC News, London, Ontario.